Hey there, it's Tank Girl, and tonight I want to talk to you guys about the N97. As you know, I've had the N97 since uh, early June, when it was uh, around the time it was released in the US. This is a European model, however, um, and um, I've had it for about almost four months now, and I've had a chance to really put it through its paces. So this, in this video, I want to kind of recap my time with the N97. So first, let's talk about the hardware. Um, as you can see, this N97 has held up pretty well to everyday life for the last three months or so. Uh, there's a little scarf mark on one spot where I dropped it on the podcast that one day. But other than that, it's been quite good. The um, hinge mechanism and everything else is uh, just as good as new. And the battery life is great still um, for a device that does so much. So things have held up pretty well. The only uh, thing I want to complain about, if, if I'm going to complain, is there's a scratch on the lens. And uh, I'll see if I can show you this in the camera here. There, you can kind of see it here. It's between, it's right above the lens here, between the flash and the actual lens objective. You can see a vertical bar that follows the motion of the door. And the what happens is, this is a common problem with the N97, you can see here as well, there's a lot of people having reported the same problem and um, it turns out this cover is plastic on top of the lens and somehow when stuff gets caught underneath the shutter, it, it scratches the plastic and I think this is pretty, pretty unfortunate. I really would like to think Nokia has thought about this and, and remedied in future products because it, it does manifest itself as some uh, um, you know, imperfections in pictures, especially like when you take night shots with light sources and you see these kind of streaks on your screen. So that's unfortunate because the camera is awesome. It's pretty much the first five megapixel camera from Nokia that I've used since the N95 that I think is worthy as a camera. And you know I'm a bit of a camera snob, so uh, at least on my phone. So that's the kind of one of the uh, you know, unfortunate little mishaps that I wish uh, Nokia could uh, handle better. Um, other than that, you know, uh, everything's been pretty good with the hardware. I think this is definitely one of the most exciting pieces of hardware from Nokia since um, since the N95. Uh, the N96 was not that much of an improvement of the N95, and um, you know. As I like touchscreen phones a lot. Now, here's one thing I want to mention, obviously, and I've complained about this many, many, many times, and it's the fact that um, this is a, not a capacitive touchscreen. It's resistive, and I just really don't like it. I mean, it's a great resistive touchscreen overall, but, you know, it's just not cutting it for me. It's like after using the iPhone and the G1 and the Pre, and I should say not just the G1, but the MyTouch 3G, the, the Magic, I have the actual Magic version. You know, this is just um, not the same. It's, it feels like I'm traveling back in time a little bit. And uh, we can debate this at length. Obviously, some people are big proponents of resistive. You know, there's the ability of using Styli and, and actually doing text input writing, input writing, etc. But um, I'm still not convinced. I, I want to see a Symbian... S50, sorry, S60 version 5, sorry, phone from Nokia with um, with a capacitive screen. And we know they've done it now with the X6. And we know that uh, Samsung has done it with the i8910. So that's a major bummer. Um, the keyboard is all right, but it's nothing to write home about. I think it certainly is easier than using the capacitive screen for text input. Um, for an on-screen keyboard, but I think that if this was a capacitive screen, it's uh, resistive, it, you could probably live without the keyboard and be fine, which is what the X6 is doing. So that's kind of where I stand on that. Now, let's talk about the software a little bit. Uh, as you can see from my few interactions, I, I just freshly booted the phone to make this video, and it's pretty slow um, and kind of buggy. And, and I, you know, wish that that wasn't the case. Now, it's not as bad as the N96, which was the buggiest Nokia flagship I ever had in my hands. But it's still disappointing. I mean, the software has not come very far since uh, 
the 5800, which is almost a year old now. And I have a 5800. And sure, there's a few improvements in the web browser and this front widgets and stuff, which I don't really find that particularly useful personally. But um, I, I think that, yeah, overall, um, I think that the improvements I've seen in the N97 mini firmware, such as kinetic, kinetic scrolling and such, I think are going to be really awesome and kick serious ass. So that's what I'm looking for. Of course, I'm not going to have this. Part of the reason I'm doing this video is because I have to return this phone. Um, I wish I could keep it so I could see the, the next version of the firmware, which will have all these great features, but it's apparently not um, in the works at this point. I'm probably going to get... Um, an N97 mini or an X6 with the new firmware, but not not this guy. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of my take on the on the N97. Is it a worthy flagship? Well, I think it is. I, I think that it is, but kind of reluctantly so. I mean, it would be a worthy flagship if the software was uh, way further ahead and if it was faster and more responsive. And um, you see, I, I just slid the uh, the hold switch twice, and it took a few seconds for the screen to come back to life. Um, if the software were better, if the screen was capacitive, if they didn't have the issues with the lens cover scratching the lens, which is really, I mean, really, really sad, considering the camera is so, so reasonably good. Um, you know, all those things would make it... Um, would make it a pretty damn awesome device. But as it is now, you know, sure, software will improve, but, you know, I can see it getting obscured by the X6, I can see it getting obscured by the N900 in the MAMO platform, etc., etc., and I'm, I'm not sure if I would get one now. Um, so, yeah, you know, I, I it's certainly one of the best Simeon phones I've used, but it's just not good enough. Now, to give you some uh, comparison, uh, here I have a Nokia N86 that arrived um, and I've used I've been using this for let me get the accelerator to react maybe maybe not I've been using this for a few days now there we are um, and you know I think this might be a better flagship than this because uh, it's not you know it's not a touch screen but it does have see I just I just did the slider on this to unlock it and the phone didn't react at all so I'm gonna do it again and here we go it's now waking up um, I think this is a more worthy flagship because this is really like the success of the N95 and N96 and certainly blows them away especially with the incredible 8 megapixel cam but you know let's not focus on this too much I just want to point out that you know, until they really, uh, until Nokia really pulls out all the, all the big guns and makes a, an N-series device that has really everything right, um, you know, I'm not sure that we can consider it a flagship. And in this case, you know, there was a lot of excitement, but ultimately, it's been a bit hit and miss for me. I have mixed feelings about the N97. And, uh, you know, the N97 Mini is feels more premium, is a little smaller and easier to use in the hand. The X6 has a capacitive screen. The N900 has better software in, you know, in the case of, of MAMO. And uh, so, yeah, look, it's the front-facing camera. So, yeah, I would say if you can get one at a good price and you're a big Nokia, especially a big Symbian fan, this might be worth it. I think that the upcoming firmware is going to be really awesome. It's going to improve the speed and the bugginess and add features that we've been expecting for a while, like kinetic scrolling, etc. But in the meantime, um, yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag. So anyway, uh, this is Tank Girl, and uh, I should be putting up a review of this phone on my blog very, very soon. Um, a full review with all the dirt. So until then, stay tuned. Uh, my blog is Tankerl Mobile, tnkgrl.wordpress.com. All right, cheers.